welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2020 BMW X3, courtesy of Apple BMW in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I recently got done reviewing the X3M, which I absolutely love. That is the performance division of this car with well more than enough power. But today I wanted to drive the more affordable one, the one that most people are going to be looking at actually purchasing being just the standard X3. And this is a very popular SUV by BMW. It is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which by the way is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So it's got that going forward if you got kids. And so as always, I will be going over absolutely everything about this one, testing out acceleration, braking, steering feel, all that fun stuff. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 X3. First one being the S Drive 30i, starting at $41,950. Then you have the X Drive 30i, the one we have today, starting at $43,950. Then lastly, the M40i, starting at $55,900. Don't get the M40i confused with the X3M. The M40i does come with an upgraded engine which I'll get into here, but it's not quite as fast as the X3M. That's the difference there. But since I mentioned it, as far as the power plant goes for those three trim levels, the first two trims being the 30i is going to have the same power plant being a two liter twin power turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 248 horsepower at 5,200 RPM, 258 pound feet of torque coming in at approximately 1,400 RPM, sent to the rear wheels for the S drive or all wheels for the X drive. That's BMW's all wheel drive system. System. Set to the ground through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which we will test out in a little bit here. Zero to 60 time comes in at six seconds flat, according to BMW, with MPG numbers coming in at 25 in the city, 29 highway for the rear wheel drive, 24 city, 29 highway once again for the all wheel drive. So same MPGs on the highway, whether or not you go with the rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. So essentially just get the all wheel drive so you can power through the snow, especially here in Pennsylvania. But the other engine set up belonging to the M40 is going to be a three liter twin power turbocharged inline six cylinder. That one puts out 382 horsepower, 5,800 RPM, 365 pound feet of torque available at approximately 1,500 RPM, sent to all wheels only through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters once again, zero to 60 on that one, 4.4 seconds. That is sports car quick right there. That's pretty darn cool. With MPG numbers coming into 21 in the city, 27 highway taking premium unleaded fuel. And so, but before we do any kind of fun accelerations or paddle shifter test on the X3, I did want to mention there are some driving modes located just to the left of the shifter. They will include Eco Pro Comfort Sport and Sport Plus, adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. I did just put it in that Sport Plus driving mode. Can tell you it is holding the RPMs at a much higher level, giving you more power on demand. So that's going to be helpful for merging onto the highway if you wanted to switch it up there but that is definitely a big old plus there but having said that if you wanted to put it in full manual shift mode you can all you need to do is simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting it's also going to tell me what gear i am actually in within the tachometer there so having said that what do you guys say let me find a straightaway here let's do a quick little acceleration here and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters react for us here. All right, I think we found our straightaway, you guys. And three, two, one, go! Yeah. They're quick, definitely quick. BMW always has insanely quick reacting paddle shifters, regardless of if you're in the BMW M2 or the X5 or the X3. So certainly no issues with any kind of delay when it comes to the paddle shifters, which is a good thing. That means you can have fun on the back roads. You can also use them for engine braking if you wanted to when it snows out in Pennsylvania here. So either way, paddle shifters are definitely a plus on the BMW X3, but to take it out of that paddle shift mode, just slide the shifter to the right and that gives control back to the X3 and you guys know what we have to do next here. Let's do a quick little acceleration test here in the X3 and let's see how quickly the X3 is going to get us here up to speed. All right, I think we got our straight away. <laughs> okay, there it is. Yeah, definitely no issues of merging onto the highway. That is plenty of power for the X3 and for what most people are going to use this thing for. So absolutely no issues there. If you wanted the little extra power, a little extra fun on the weekends, 
go with the M40i or better yet the X3M even, but still no issues whatsoever with the X30i. So plenty of power for this thing. So I am impressed, but to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes. 60 to zero stopping distance comes in at approximately 123 feet. Did want to mention though, with the dynamic handling package, there are M Sport brakes that come with that. So that's gonna better that stopping distance a little bit for you as well. But overall, as far as the braking feel goes, I've had absolutely no issues whatsoever. There's no brake pedal delay or anything like that. So braking feel is perfectly fine in the X3. Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a multi-link front axle suspension with spring struts. In the back, five-link rear suspension, front and rear stand stabilizer bars, gas pressurized shock absorbers, all that pretty standard for the most part. But in addition to that, I wanted to mention back to that dynamic handling package, by the way, that goes for $1,300. Not only does it give you better braking, but it will give you a variable sport suspension. So a little more direct steering there. Also an adaptive damping suspension. And that's really the one that you want. And here's why that gives you the best of both worlds. It monitors each shock absorber individually, not only giving you a smoother ride, soaking up the roads and perfections, but it will actually tighten up the suspension during heavy cornering as well. So again, best of both worlds. So that is why I would definitely recommend that package. But overall, as far as the steering feel goes, it's been perfectly fine for me. One of the best parts about BMW, I always like to mention this, the grips, the 10 and 2 grips on just about any BMW are a lot thicker than most other manufacturers out there, which gives the driver a better feeling of confidence, a better feeling of being more in control of the X3. So I absolutely love that about the X3. As far as ride quality goes, that is the first thing I muttered to myself when I first got in this one. And I recently reviewed the X5 as well. And at that price point, it's pretty much expected ride quality to be on point. But with the X3, I wasn't actually sure because with the X1 and the X2, there is certainly a clear difference when you compare that to the X5. But the X3, as far as ride quality goes, is definitely more along the lines of the X5. It's beautiful. It's certainly soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely. So X3 has wonderful ride quality definitely comparable to the x5 as opposed to the x1 or x2 so that is definitely a big plus in my opinion cabin noise has been perfectly fine as well the only cabin noise i'm getting i got the climate control on right now but that's really about it when it comes to that touching on visibility again i can see perfectly fine out the back so you're not going to have any issues there whatsoever then would also mention though rain sensing windshield wipers come standard on the x3 so that's going to essentially turn on the wipers whenever the x3 detects any kind of rainfall or even mist one less thing you got to worry about kind of like automatic headlights there head-up display is going to come with the premium and executive packages so that will be there for you if you wanted it so yet another benefit to visibility better focus on enjoying the drive a little more so that is a big plus there as well but that about rounds out the performance section of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this jet black 2020 bmw x3 all right you guys here she is the 2020 bmw x3 i know i said jet black before but the exterior color on this one is actually called black sapphire metallic so that is what you currently are looking at right now but let's go ahead and start up front on the x3 here bmw active kidney front grill will come standard it is going to come with a chrome perimeter of course that looks good up there to the corners down below there air curtains are going to be located down there better help directing air around the wheel and tire combination they will come standard with some silver accents but i did want to mention something to you guys the x3 that we have today has the m sport package so because of that you will find gloss black accents down in those corners there which actually look quite good with this black sapphire metallic exterior that we got there in addition to that the m sport package is also going to give you a revised front bumper more aerodynamically on point front bumper i guess you could say to the sides led headlights will come standard they do come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also coming standard led fog lights standard as well and actually one of the new features for the 202030i trims adaptive full led headlights are available with the executive package so they weren't available previously for the 2019 model but they are now for the 2020 x3 and again you can get that with the executive package if you wanted to go that route but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the x3 first thing i wanted to mention satin aluminum roof rails come standard on the x3 however again if you go with the m sport you will find gloss black roof rails up top there satin aluminum window surrounds come standard 
standard gloss black window surrounds for the M Sport. Down below on those fender accents, you will find chrome fender accents that come standard. Again, gloss black for the M Sport once again there. Take a look at the side mirrors though. They are power adjustable body colored side mirrors. They do come heated. They will come with integrated turn signals, LED integrated turn signals, I, sh I should say. So they definitely look good there. Did want to also mention though, there is a matte black trim you could find around the wheel arches. That's the standard setup. Again though, if you go with the M Sport, that is going to be a body colored trim. So it's kind of hard to tell because we do have the black exterior, but if we were to have like a blue exterior, red exterior, that trim around those wheel arches would be body colored as opposed to the matte black look that you get standard on the X3. So I wanted to mention that, but taking a look down at the wheel setup now, 18 inch Y spoke wheels will come standard, 19 inch M specific double five spoke wheels will come with the M Sport package that we do indeed again have here today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the x3 shark fin antenna up top there that's always there of course rear spoiler with an integrated brake light comes standard rear window wiper as well led taillights coming standard across the board for the x3 as far as the bottom portion of the x3 goes satin aluminum accents are going to be found on that rear bumper that's the standard setup however gloss black accents with the m sport that we have today of course and just below it all, dual exhaust outlets with very bright chrome tips across the board. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. something else since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there of course is a button on the key fob that is one way power lift gate does come standard by the way so if you want to simply just lift up on the hatch there that is another way you're going to be able to open it up hands-free lift gate comes with the convenience premium or executive packages so those are the three ways to get the hands-free lift gate meaning just kick your foot underneath and it is going to open up itself if your hands are full with groceries or whatever the case so that's a pretty convenient feature there too but once opened up ton of stuff going on in the cargo area 28.7 cubic feet is what you're going to find behind that second row with the second row folded down there's a 40 20 40 split that bumps it up to 62.7 cubic feet there's cargo nets back there there's four tie down anchors there's a cargo cover 12 volt power outlet and a good bit of in floor storage as well so like i said a ton of stuff going on back there and that's all a lot of features that doesn't always come standard on every suv out there so that was nice to see back there Making our way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 36.4 inches. So for reference, I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Did want to also mention for those rear passengers, they will find a rear center armrest with cup holders. There's rear ventilation back there. Charging ports, there's a little bit of storage. You can get rear window sunshades. That's a $250 option, standalone option if you wanted to go that route. Heated rear seats are going to come with the premium package and executive package if you wanted to spoil your rear passengers a little bit back there. And make your way to the front seats. 10-way power adjustable front seats come standard with two-way power side bolsters, memory settings for up to two different drivers, and the standard finish is going to be a Sensatec upholstery. However, there are leather seating finishes that goes for $1,450. Plenty of different color options there, by the way. Heated front seats are going to come with the premium package. Ventilated front seats is an additional option for $350. We actually do have that option today, but again, it's a standalone option if you wanted to go that route. Lumbar support is going to come with a convenience premium and executive packages. Any one of those will get you that. Seating is plenty comfortable, so certainly no issues for me. Definitely can see myself going on long road trips in the X3, so that's a big plus there too. Take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped. It is heated. If you want to spend an additional $190, that is an option for the heated steering wheel. But again, the 10 and two grips are certainly on point. So that's probably my favorite part about the steering wheel though. Let me get to the startup now. Let me show you guys the key. Since we have the M Sport package on this one today, you do have the M colors on the side of the key. But other than that, all of your buttons are located on the front. Lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch 
Lock button is the BMW logo in the middle, by the way, but it is all keyless entry, so simply just keep the key in your pocket, walk up to the X3, put your foot on the brake, and press that engine start button, which is located just to the right of the gauges there. And so, but then once started up, there's a couple different gauge setups. We do have the upgraded one that comes with the premium and executive packages, which is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. You won't get the digital gauge cluster without getting one of those packages though, but I do like this one though. You got your speed information on the left, including a digital speedometer. Tachometer is on your right. It does adjust the colors depending upon what drive mode you put it in. So Eco Pro is gonna be a blue hue. Comfort is gonna be, you know, standard setup and then Sport and Sport Plus is gonna be more red hues. So that's pretty cool. Outside temperature you can find up there. Navigation information is gonna be displayed in the middle. How many miles do you have left until you hit empty? So really everything you would need in a gauge display you can find up there though. Taking a look at overall interior quality, Anthracite headliner coming standard on this one, panoramic moonroof coming with the convenience, premium, or executive packages, therefore we do have that today. Universal garage door openers can be found for up to three different garage doors on the bottom of the rear view mirror there. Three zone climate control comes standard, ambient lighting comes with the executive package, or as a standalone option for $250. Either way, I'll get you that. Wireless phone charger adds $150. It's gonna be located just in front of the cup holders. And just above that, I like the X3 embossing just above that as well. It's a pretty cool look. Carbon fiber trim, since we have the M Sport today. I love all the carbon fiber trim, and it's not fake. It's not the fake stuff. This is authentic carbon fiber trim found just below the infotainment display. Also on the doors there, I love that. Also a full leather finish. That's an option, by the way, but we have a full leather finish on the dashboard up here with contrast stitching. I absolutely love that as well. Very high-end finishes to the X3, along with aluminum trim on the passenger side glove box there. Got to mention even more carbon fiber around the circular dial and buttons to the right of the shifter there. So overall, an insanely high-end finish to at least this particular X3. I absolutely love it dual cup holders, 12 volt power outlet, and you got a decent amount of storage within that center armrest, including a phone charger in there as well. But now let me make our way to the tech display on the X3 here. 8.8 .8 inch color touchscreen display coming standard. It is voice activated. Again, it's touchscreen or there's a circular dial in buttons to the right of the shifter and gesture control is available with the executive package. So that's gonna be where you can point your finger in a clockwise rotation to turn up the radio, counterclockwise to turn it down. There's a bunch of different gestures you can use there. It's pretty cool. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation standard actually for the 2020 X3, and that's newly standard for the 2020 model year. It didn't come standard in 2019, so yet another new feature for the 2020 X3. Climate control coming standard, ambient lighting coming standard, radio information you can check out up there as well, by the way. 12 speakers, 205 watts is gonna be your standard setup. However, there is an optional sound system being the 16 speaker Harman Kardon surround sound system. 600 watts, $875 option, by the way. So that is actually the one we have today, of course. So what do you say? Let's turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. You know this one. Wow, that was really an amazing sound system for the X3, quite honestly. Ton, ton, ton of bass, crystal clear. Absolutely love that. Like, that was, that was really good. 16 speakers, I guess, will do it for you, but dang. That was a really nice sound system. That kind of surprised me, quite honestly. Well done, Harman Kardon. But so the last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the X3 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera that comes standard. However, there is a 360 degree monitor that comes with the parking assistance package, which is $700, by the way. That gives you, of course, a 360 degree view with the X3 rendered in digital form. That is pretty cool as well. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention with the safety, again, the X3 is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which really is all you need to know right there. Front side, side curtain airbags come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks coming standard, tire pressure monitoring system, auto dimming rear view and driver side exterior mirror also coming standard that's definitely nice and some of the other advanced safety coming standard is going to include frontal collision warning automatic city collision mitigation
navigation and braking, front and rear parking sensors, and adaptive cruise control. And so there is an optional driving assistance package I wanted to mention that goes for $500. That is going to add the blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, and pedestrian and frontal collision warning with city collision mitigation. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the 2020 X3, certainly interior quality is the very best, 100% on point really, and plenty more than I expected quite honestly in the X3. The only thing that would have made it better is an Alcantara or a suede headliner, but other than that, interior quality is dang near perfect, so I love that. Plenty of fuel efficiency for an SUV, actually nice handling for an SUV as well. Ambient lighting is great, of course, although it was hard to show you guys in the bright sunny daytime in Pennsylvania here today. My only constructive criticism really for the X3 is it would have been nice to see blind spot monitor coming standard as opposed to part of a package option. And the other downside is there's only two standard colors for the X3, including white and black. All the other colors available for this one are a $550 option. But if you like this black just as much as I do, and I actually do really like this color, then you're good. In the end, a very good looking SUV, extremely smooth ride, and that really does it for me right there. The ride quality is perfectly on point. So I actually really like this one, but that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're in a new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Bye.